Hello everybody, we're going to turn up that volume very quickly for you. My name is Jake Valentine, joined by Patrick Narsavage. We're here to bring you four rounds of some standard here on a Wednesday night. Uh, Tour Exelon is coming up soon. Uh, Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about you, Jake? Not too bad. I heard you uh, spiked the PPTQ this weekend. Yeah, I did. I was uh, playing one of the decks we're going to see on camera right now, Teamer Energy. Uh, it went pretty well. How often did you uh, play against Ramon Up Red? Uh, just once. Just once? Yeah, I played a lot of mirror match. I think half the field was teamer. Interesting. I mean, do you, were you surprised by that? No, not at all. Um, I actually expected most of the field to be teamer, and I kind of tuned how I set up my main deck for that reason. Um, I did get crushed by someone who had the balls to play four color. <laughs> I heard of that. Was that round one? You just yes, round one, one, I just lost to four color. Looks like players are underway. We'll hopefully get to the play space for you soon. As it looks like Taylor is on the play. Yes, he was. He has a total of one, two, three, four damage coming across. And Jared already at 16, and oh boy. Yeah, this is a this is a bit of a slow start for Jared here, and he's probably going to need to have a Magma Spray here to keep up with that. We'll see if he actually no, has those No, he in his doesn't. Deck. He's going down to 13. Okay. Uh, now, a lot of people have been wondering about whether or not this... Um, Shelter Thicket is worth it in the deck, and this is a case for it to not be worth it. Yeah, I only played two when I played, and I think that's probably all Jared's on, but I very strongly consider going down to one, and the so reason I didn't is because I wanted to keep two in there for the mirror match. Yeah, I just like cycling lands out, but here when you draw them, turn one, turn two on the draw against Jam Out of Red, where yeah, Taylor has planned his deck accordingly, see the main board room paging for Yeah, just one, two, one drop, two drop, three drop, kill yeah. your guy, and Jared's Kind of forced to make a Thopter here, which is going to mean he's going to take another yep. damage off this Rampaging Ferocidon. Already done 11. He can trade the Earthshaker Kenra, but that's... That's not great. That's terrible. He's still taking four. Because it's seven. He looks like he is going to offer the trade there. Yeah, and he actually drew one of probably the worst cards in this matchup in Carnage Tyrant in his opening hand. <laughs> so that's not going to be... He's got a bunch of things that are good in theory, but um, Chandra not so good on this board. Yeah, it looks like he's got two more copies of Whirl of Virtuoso in hand. That's pretty nice. He's it's gonna... nice, except he's yeah. at seven, and there's a rampaging for us on a board. And this is why people are playing this card main deck now in red. Yeah, they're normally playing it instead of Oncrap Crasher, which mainly for this matchup, Oncrap Crasher is pretty good oh. against someone making like one or two fairly sizable creatures that you can just make sure they can't block and get your creatures through. But against like a Whirl of Virtuoso that's pumping out one, two, three. Thopters over the course of the game. Aqua Crasher is really not going to do that much. That's how I uh, lost my red matchup in the Classic a couple weekends ago. Four main yeah. board Harsh Mentors, four main board uh, Ferocidons. Yeah, I'm still not sold on the main deck Harsh Mentors. Um, I've heard some people say it's good. It's normally replacing Carry Zev. So... We actually don't have Taylor's list available, but we have another red player here, uh, Jesse Sinopoli, who we may or may not have seen on camera. I know he's doing the main board Harsh Mentors and Ferocidons as Taylor's playing a Hazaret. And he is attacking with a hazard. Yeah, this has been almost the best draw for Taylor for this deck. Um, I don't see a great way Jarek can come out of this. He, I believe, is actually just taking lethal yep, here. Yep, he just scoops it up. Taylor Gun very quickly wins game number one. He mentioned as he had to go to the bathroom earlier. Uh, that I don't think we're going to time. And when you start like that in red and you're playing it's a teamer deck on the draw, that's playing two lands coming playing tapped. It's pretty uh pretty simple. Yeah, it's sub five minute game. So we're gonna pull up um what may be uh, Taylor's list. Um his main board creatures are four Bobat Koreas, four harsh mentors, four Hazarets, three carry Zevs, four for us and full soul square majors. So he's cutting uh Earthshaker Kenra and he's cutting Well he name? obviously didn't cut Earthshaker Kenra, we saw it in that game. Yeah, but I mean Jesse's cutting the Kenra. He might be cutting the tail might be cutting the crasher. But I don't okay. know if he's going, you know, full blown um for mentors for uh, for Ossadon. It'll be interesting to see how he does this moving forward. Yeah, I definitely do like the change to having Rampaging for Ossadon in the main deck. It's It protects you from the worst card in your worst matchup, which is Whirl of Virtuoso against Teamer. It also is really good against all these token decks that are popping around, which if they get their opening draws into like Hidden Stockpiles, Anointed Priest, Anointed Procession, those can be pretty hard to win from the red side and having Rampaging for Ossadon on your deck just negates all that life gain they would get and deals them more damage every time they have a token come into play, which they can make a lot of tokens. Do you think that token deck's real? I think people think it's real. Um, I 
personally haven't been sold on yet. I think its early game is a little too weak to compete in standard right now, but if more decks keep going towards control and going slower to try to beat Teamer, then I think the deck could... It, it, I think it has the best long game in the format. So if decks keep slowing down, if Mono Red keeps getting pushed out by Teamer, I do think you can see this deck make a resurgence. I do prefer the Esper versions to Absent. I think having the Scarab God in your deck is too important, especially with Anointed Procession. Just having Anointed Procession to play and activating Scarab God on anything. Because there's still tokens just, they come to There's play, still right? tokens, so that's probably just going to win the game for you. I'm trying to think. Absent just splashes for Raska. And that's yeah, not, it's just for not the most... Like, Vraska's good. She's a good Planeswalker. It's but not Elspeth good. It's no, no. Nowhere near Elspeth good. So for those of you wondering what the deck list of our players are, we have compiled a collection of deck lists at our new website, topdeckproductions.com slash decks. There you can see what we've compiled thus far. Uh, I know there's a request earlier today for John Douglas's Esper Gift deck. We'll try to get that on camera. Uh, if there's anyone else you want to see, um, their name is not Billy Caminos because he will never give out deck lists, sadly. Um, let us know, and we'll get it for you. Hope to see Billy back here soon. Yeah, uh, how's he doing? I haven't seen him in a while. Um, he's firing off a fantasy pro tour league tomorrow. Okay. So good night for that. But he said there was a reason why he didn't show up at Cincinnati. Yeah. So not quite mm -hmm. yet. But he said when he gets better fully, he will come back to play. Yeah, I remember uh, the last one he did. I actually won that fantasy draft without even participating in it. <laughs> How did you pull that off? Just I I did Robert Meadows draft for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Robert was playing in an event here. I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was just like, it was modern. I was playing Burn. I was done. He like, just handed me his phone. He was like, here, draft for me. I'm like, Do you remember who you picked? Um, I think I picked PV, That's which a helped out. Yeah. It helped out. <laughs> um, yeah. Who do you like this weekend? Um, I would be paying special attention to, I think, Huey Jensen just knows what he's doing in this format. I have been I've watched him draft a lot from Worlds and Nationals and I think just Peach Garden Oath in general just really has a read on this draft format. So I th I would look for them to be doing pretty well and then also I'd be watching uh LSV. This is his first that pro is tour right. back he's, in a he's while. Back in pro tour. And I I think he's he's looking to come back with a vengeance. And if he top eights this next pro tour that's four PT top eights in a row for him. Yeah. So that would be pretty cool. I like your point about how the Peach Garden Oath team has a good grasp in the draft format just because everyone's saying this is such a weird draft format where it's super bomb heavy and super just not as good as the last. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I'm not a personally a fan of this draft format. Um, I do definitely disagree with the fact that it's bomb heavy because I don't particularly think that like, there's some rares, obviously. There's always going to be rares in draft formats that are just unbelievably good. Burning Sun's Avatar, Hostage Taker, stuff like that. But this format's fast, so you can beat bomb rares. The reason people think it's so bomb heavy is because the playable count is very low. That's what I've heard most yeah, often. Yeah, so if you draft a deck that only has, like three like really desirable cards and like you're in like a tribe but maybe there's two other people in that tribe your deck's gonna suffer for it and i've seen packs that are like pick two where you just can't find a good card to save your life and that's just not so something i enjoy feeling about this no. draft format i've actually not yet played a uh, limited version of this format yet you're not missing out on that much, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got Taylor Among in the six starts with a turn one Bomac Courier. He strides at the bottom. Jared with a turn two Servant of the Conduit. Yeah, Jared having a play on two in this matchup is very important for him. I think he would prefer it would be a long tusk cub, but with how his I mean he's just gonna die anyway. Yeah, well with a long tusk cub, especially because um you can he didn't have a tune, which means he wouldn't be able to make the play, but you can block an earth shaker Kenra with Cub, and that's very important. Ta uh, I'm sorry. Jared drew a Cub return, but he's going to hold it back and build up his energy to try to get out of a burn range as Taylor uh, is looking to make another play here. Yeah, I actually think he played the Servants of the Cub mainly because he missed his third land drop. Yeah, that too. So I think he just wants to get access to his third mana. You can see he has a very expensive hand. It looks like he had Confiscation Coup and Bristling Hydra. Meanwhile, Taylor dropping another Ferocidon. 
Yeah, and so... Jared picks up a perfect land there. It's yeah. a Tentacle Sanctum with two or less, so it comes into play untapped, and now Jared decides, what do I do? Yeah, so, yeah, he has another Servant, a Cub, a Magma Spray, a Hydra, and a Confiscation Coup. None of these cards really do that much. I, if I was Jared, would probably want to definitely get this Servant into play right now, which he's going to do. Um, that way, if Taylor plays a Hazard next turn, it can be Confiscation Cued, which is very important in this matchup. Yeah, Jerry can't quite block yet with that Long Cost Cub, but uh, he can coup next turn as Taylor draws a Chandra towards your Defiance, but he can't play it yet. He's missing his fourth land. Yeah, so that's going to be something that Jared's going to want to going to be happy to see. And we're going to see here what Taylor decides to do with this Rampaging Ferocidon. I think he's supposed to attack... He knows that Jared missed his third land drop on turn three, and I think he'd be okay trading this Rampaging Ferocidon for a Servant, especially now that he has this Harsh Mentor in play, so he's going to know how big Jared is going to make this Cub before he decides to attack. Yeah, he's making Jared um, activate it before. Yeah, which, th this is probably what we expected to see. Um... The rest of Taylor's hand is Bomek, Courier, Carry Zev, and the Chandra we talked about. It was like Jared's got that Hydra, the Navis brand, a Confiscation Q, and that's about it as Taylor passes the turn. Yeah, Taylor doesn't attack, which I can definitely see why he didn't attack. You definitely just don't want to throw... You don't really want to trade your Rampaging Ferocidon for a Servant. Yeah. I think there's some appeal to it based on the fact that Jared had missed his third land drop previously. That time seems long gone by now, though. Yeah, it's... It's definitely not gone right now. Um, Jared has a pretty nice turn here. I think if I were here, I would just play this Bristling Hydra and then Magma Spray the Harsh Mentor. Yeah, Jared's still going to take the one for the Raptor. But yeah, he's still going to take the one for the... He can remove for, that really annoying Harsh Mentor and still do things. Yeah, and I actually think what he wants to do here is he actually wants to attack with the Cub before casting Magma Spray, which you're going to see. This at least gives Taylor the chance to double block, which he would then be able to blow out with the Magma Spray. Taylor's uh, too smart for that. Yeah, Taylor's too smart for that, but every small instance you can give your opponent to make a mistake always is always going to help out. The one interesting thing by Taylor not blocking, that gives Jared more energy, so he can uh, add the mana from the Servant and still be able to activate Bursting Hydra twice if he wishes to. Yeah, that is going to be a big deal here. Um, I think what Taylor did end up drawing his fourth land, so we pr might see Chandra come down here. I don't know what Chandra's supposed to do on this board, though. It actually can't get rid of a relevant threat. He's going to make some random yeah, plays. Um, which is this one of the reasons I'm kind of down on Chandra right now. I don't think it's very good at stabilizing a board anymore. I think there's too many threats that are just get too big or can give themselves hexproof. And... A lot of the times, whenever I play Chandra in like my teamer decks, I always find myself making mana. I've yet to miss Chandra. I've not played it since Six Long came out. I've, there's never been a time where I went, oh, I wish I had a Chandra right now. Yeah, and that's going to be a big draw for Jared here. He drew a copy of Whirler Virtuoso, and now that the Harsh Mentor is gone, he's still going to take a point of damage from all of the Thopters entering in, but... He can he's, activate it. Yeah, he's he can activate it now, and he's at a healthy 15 life. I don't think he's really going to care too much about taking two to three more points of damage and you can see Chandra was four mana add two red gain eight life it's not that's not terrible too great. but it's, it's not, not the, the worst thing in the world but we're getting to a point where taylor needs to rip something that jared can't deal with right now and well, that's that has a rip but again jared has that jared has two go. so i wonder if taylor is aware of that He's definitely going to be aware that's a possibility. I think he's at the point right now where I don't think he can play around Koo at all. Well, he's going to play the Bowman Courier. So no Hazard this turn. Yeah, I mean, nothing on this board really matters to Jared. He can trade the Bomat Couriers for Thopters, which is kind of insane. And honestly, you probably are going to see Taylor sacrifice the Bowman Courier with three cards, discard this Hazaret. Um, this is not going to work out the way Taylor or Jared wants because carries up his first strike. So those are just going to bounce. Yeah, they're just going to, you know, wave each other in the passing. Like how yeah, did, they, did he think they were going to trade? Possibly. 
Yeah, Carrier's Lift is a very hard creature to block. Because Menace and First Strike. The reason why I play so many uh, three damage spells if I keep attacking. Carrier's Lift is still able to uh, steal games every now and then, and she might be doing that right now. As uh, as you mentioned, Taylor's going to activate both my yeah. careers, so activate one with yeah. a every second. And he found another Hazard. Yeah, so he found a Hazard. I think... So this play, to me, indicates that he is aware that Confiscation Coup is a card Jarek could have, and he needs one of these threats to stick. It is mainboarded now, too, in these Timber decks. Yeah, it's now mainboard. so I think what Taylor's actually going to do, he found Hazard, but he also found a Glorybringer That's in those cards, so I think he's... I don't know if he found the fifth land. Oh. <laughs> he's cooing the Bomat Courier. Is this lethal? That's lethal. He's just that is lethal. lethal. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So we're busy trying to figure out, okay, Taylor can have a really powerful turn here. If he draws fifth land, he can glory bringer. If not, he can have options. But Derek's like, wait, you have no blockers. Yep. You can make a bunch of energy. It's like I think, I think he had like one blocker, but still. Yeah, it was like, the Bomac Carrier. And then Derek oh, so the carries that was tapped. That's right. Yeah, just like this good old, I'm That's going funny. to coo my cub and not steal anything, just gain a bunch of energy and, and attack you for you with, Yeah, I've done that. So Jared, in the most unorthodox of manners, takes game two, but now he's back on the draw. Now we have to talk about sideboarding this matchup, because I don't know about you, but I think I sideboard differently every time I play red. Yeah, I... So I have... definitely have two cards that always come in in this matchup. I have two copies of Chandra's Defeat in my sideboard. Same. Those cards always come in. They're always going to be great. I norm Right now I have one Death Gore Scavenger in my board. That's coming in just to as a way to just like gain life, maybe it can trade with something. It's just a positive exchange, because if you can make the game go long, you're probably going to be favored a little bit more. I don't and have it, two scavengers uh, sideboard for that reason. Yeah, I also have an, a braid in my sideboard, which normally comes in, and then I sometimes bring in Supreme Will on the draw, just as a way, because one of the ways you can lose this matchup handily is just an unanswered Hazard. I can see that, and Supreme Will works too, where if they're playing around a card like Essence Scatter, Supreme Will can at least dig you cards. Yeah, I definitely leave in my copies of Essence Scatter. That and Supreme Will counters Chandra. That's true. I can't um, tell you how terrible it is to have up Essence Scatter and they go, hey, I have a, sh I have a Chandra. Oh, yeah, no, it's the worst. And it's just, oh, I lose now. Cool. Yeah. Me, I, yeah, I bring in um, the Abrade. The, that's my third Abrade, two Chandra defeats. Uh, two Death Course Scavengers, and I actually bring in two Vizier of Many Faces. How have you felt about Vizier in this matchup? It won't be a game. Okay. Um, I personally feel like it's a little too slow. Vizier is in the sideboard mainly for decks where, like, it's all about creature trading, creature combat, and just having one creature that can effectively be two creatures with that embalm ability uh, has been really important. And my big thing is that um, it can become a Hazard, it can become a Glory Rare. And okay, I, I can see definitely yeah. becoming a glory bringer being important, and obviously, like if you can get to that point where you have zero or one card in hand, copying a hazard is definitely going to be good at offsetting their hazard. I think that um, I just so lost the, my tra train of thought. So, CM Punk, the problem with Chandra is if you're holding up Essence Scatter. And your game plan is don't lose the Hazard, don't lose the Hazard. That's where Chandra can be good. Because uh, presumably, especially game one, if you're playing Teamer and you're on the draw, and your whole game plan is don't lose to a Chandra, don't lose to a Hazard, and you're killing things to add into your board, that's where Chandra can do well. Uh, as we saw that game, when Jared actually has a board state, Chandra is not so good. Just because there was Taylor kind of modest, and he could have killed either a Servant. Virgiloso, or he could have did four damage to something that either went in hexproof or too big to do damage. Yeah, Chandra's a lot better when you're ahead, and the problem with that match w was Taylor at no point in that game was ahead. No, never. Uh, so we're gonna see a turn two harsh mentor here and a turn two cub for Jared. No one drop for Taylor. That's it's pretty relevant, but it's not the worst thing in the world. No, because Taylor's gonna play removal spell and get in there for two. Yeah, and this is just Taylor trying to stay ahead, trying to make sure that he always has the initiative going into these key turns, like turn three, where Jared could play like a Whirler Virtuoso or a Rogue Refiner. Taylor and has a decent amount of removal in his hand, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he has another Lightning Strike, another Harsh Mentor. So 
if Jared doesn't have a way to deal, deal with these harsh mentors, his comeback mechanics in World of Virtuoso, Long Tusk Cup, Bristling Hydra, they're pretty bad. They're they're gonna hurt. Let's see what Taylor has on his fourth turn. I'm not sure if I saw an Urshak or Kenra in this hand or not. Um, I didn't see one of those. The big thing to me, I didn't see a fourth land. I don't think there's going to be a point right now where Taylor's going to be able to cast two spells in one turn. I think his hand was all two drops. Jared's going to play another Cub. Yeah, He's and that's like going to die to either a Braid or Lightning Strike. Yeah, he has a Braid and Lightning Strike, and Taylor just drew the Ferocity as well. Yeah, I think he wants to kill this Cub now because... There's going to be a problem later down the road if this cub he gets two more energy and he can't kill it. Here's an interesting play. Uh, Taylor taps out for a Ferocidon. Yeah, does so... Does not deal with the cub. And I think his line of thinking behind that is even if Jared does grow the cub, he's going to be taking damage. So I think he's trying to maneuver this point where, like, Jared can't afford to... Activate, but this line from Jared. Yeah, how are Jared just gonna kill both his things? Yeah, kill both his things. Make Cub bigger. Yeah, Cubs become a, become a three three. It's gonna hit in for two more damage or three more damage, and it's just now he can't lightning strike it. He can he can lightning strike and abrade it. He has a two for one himself, and that's just absolutely terrible. Um, how do you feel about this not activating Long Tusk Cub in response to Harsh Mentor? Uh, I think Jared should have pumped the cub before he attacked. I do too. I, I you do as well. I don't want to be cute with that card ever. I, I don't want to be cute with that card. I also, once I'm even even somewhat ahead against Mono Red, I want to kill them. I want to kill them as yeah. quick as possible. Make sure they don't have time to catch back up. I want to get my threats out of burn range, and I want to kill them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see it. This is a really good hand from Jared. He had... Taylor's going to make him... Uh, yeah, he's going to make him save the cub... It's going to take four damage, Jared's but -okay with Jared's that. perfectly fine with that. He has now seven power on board already. He's got a Glorybringer in hand. He has all five lands. I don't see this game going poorly for Jared unless he can't stop a Hazoret. I don't think Taylor has Hazoret in hand either. Yeah, which it's going to be fairly important. And yeah, I want to. I would want to put two more counters on there. Um, if you do. That puts Cub to a 6-6. Six, six. Taylor would be at 12. And you would actually have lethal next turn. And he could do that anyway, but... Taylor's hand is not great. No, Taylor's hand is not great. I think you're just going to see Slam Glorybringer. And honestly, I wouldn't even exert. No, just... You don't care about this 1-1. One, one. Oh, and draws Whirly Virtuoso. He also has the Vizier in many faces in hand as so well. So he does like to bring that in in this matchup. He might not need it here. He's going no, I, I to don't think he's going to need it. Is this four, five, six, seven, eight? Not quite lethal. He is. Yeah, really and short. that two damage last turn. Yep, that would have been would have been lethal. But so instead, Taylor done the six. I don't think there's. I don't think there's any it. draw that Taylor can have. But you you always want to make sure you just lower all outs your opponent could have. Mm -hmm. Plays a curry Zev, he attacks with a courier. He might crack it here. Yep, he does. Look he crack it. I mean, literally anything. Chandra's defeat, I guess. Nope, he has a land and a lightning strike, and he's just going to pass it back. Yeah, he's and this is going to be lethal. Yep, Jared can, he can exert, he can confiscation coup, he can do whatever the heck he I wants. I mean, yeah, he just needs to. He's a vision of the many faces. Oh, glory God, bringer. Glory bringer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do what you want, buddy. That's another thing, you got too. The that's Glorybringer 5 and 6, and Jared, after losing an awkward game 1 where he stumbled, uh, wins this match two games to 1 over red. Yeah, and that's definitely that's just how I feel this matchup normally goes. Jared has very efficient, very cheap removal that he can bring in in this matchup, and he also has very cheap, very efficient threats in the World of Virtuous, so Long Tusk Cub, and then even Glorybringer as a 5-mana haste 4-4 four four that also kills a creature... That's just all you really need to be mono red. I think it's very telling that Taylor saw his BF2 cards in a matchup multiple times and did not win. Yeah. Both games he cast with the Harsh Mentor and Frost on he lost. Yep. And... It's, I mean, sometimes you get there when you curve out, but when Jared had double removal spell, like it was nothing, it, you know, the Cub just didn't matter what Taylor had. Uh, that'll do it for round one here. We'll try to find a second match for you. 
Uh, but stay tuned. Um, we'll be back in about 20 minutes or so. I know last night went pretty, pretty fast between rounds. Hopefully the same is true tonight. Uh, just as a friendly reminder, be sure to check us out on YouTube for archives of this match and all of the matches we stream all week long at youtube.com slash topdeckproductionstream. All spelled out. Uh, for Patrick, I'm Jake. We'll be back in about 25 minutes.